What is up, Vanguard? My name is Janessa, and today I'm going to share with y'all my story. I hope you guys are doing great. I hope you're having a wonderful semester, a wonderful week. I am so excited today because I am at my home church, you guys. I have not been here for about a year now, and that's crazy to say out loud. We are unfortunately still closed, um, but it's such an honor to be here today because... I will not be able to tell my story without talking about this church right here. Um, and so I'm super excited to be here to share my story with y'all. And before, sorry, my camera's a little crooked. But before I get started, I'm going to briefly introduce myself and then I'll jump right into my story. So like I said, my name is Janessa. I am majoring in psychology and I'm also minoring in sociology and religion. I'm graduating in the fall, so I'm super excited about that. Super excited, but low-key scared because, you know, I'm going to be in the real world. Then you got to think about grad school, all that. So, um, But we're not going to talk about that right now. We're not, gonna, we're not even going to think about that because I'm going to sit up here and stress myself out. But, um, yeah, and then I'm also a tutor at Vanguard. I tutor psych, statistics, and sociology. So if y'all are looking for a tutor... I'm your girl. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be self-promoting myself like this, but <laughs> I said it. It is what it is. Um, and yeah, just jumping right into my story. Like I said, this has been my church since I was seven years old. My grandmother brought my family and I here. And it's really funny because before she had even brought us here, I had a dream that my family and I were going to be in this church. And I literally saw everything from the podium to the drums, the piano, the pastor, everything. And so when she brought us here and that dream, you know, came alive, it was so amazing to see. And now that I look back, um, God was showing me as a little girl how much this church would play a key role in my life. This is where I learned about God, learned about Jesus, gained my relationship with Christ, strengthened my relationship with Christ, still strengthening my relationship with Christ. So it's been such an honor to me um, and such a blessing to me to be a part of this church. So yeah, jumping into my more personal life. Um, growing up, my family and I experienced a lot of loss. And so there was a time period where going to funerals were almost as common as going to like birthday parties for us because literally um, so many of our loved ones were passing away. When I was four years old, my mother had a miscarriage, so we lost my baby brother. And then when I was 10 years old, my dad's only brother passed away and so that was really hard on my family about a year later my grandmother passed away and that was it was really 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 hard for me with her passing because i was always with her i mean she was my grandmother right um i expected her to be at every graduation um, my wedding, you know, you don't think as a child that you're going to lose the people closest to you. And so it was kind of like my worst nightmare happening right before my eyes. And when she passed away, it was really hard on not only me, but my family, obviously. And I never really dealt with that. Um, and I, I just kind of suppressed those emotions, um, which is going to later or which did later affect my life so uh, yeah then about a month later her brother passed away and he passed away in a tragic way I'm not gonna go into detail but he passed away in the same house as my grandmother and it was only a month after she had passed away and then after that my great-grandmother passed away a few of my uncles passed away so it was just loss after loss after loss and you know some were to death and some were just to disconnections and things like that so it was really hard on me and like I said I never knew how to navigate through those emotions um I never knew what grieving was or I never really talked about my emotions and so I would just distract myself with school or you know hanging out with friends um and on the outside, I looked like I was holding it together and I was putting up this image that I'm fine, I'm happy, I'm smiling, I'm good. But deep down inside, I was losing myself because I felt like everything was changing and I had no control over the things that were happening in my life. And 
it was really hard. And then at 13 or 12 years old, um, my mom then had this major injury where she injured herself and she ended up suffering from a concussion and she, um, she hit her head very hard and you know, your mind and your brain controls everything, all the functions in your body. And so when she had that injury, it was really hard seeing my mom like that because she wasn't able to do anything. She wasn't even able to go outside because the light would bother her. She had damaged her sensory, um, her motors. And so she was very sensitive to light and also to hearing. So she'd have to wear earplugs and when I tell y'all that she could not go outside, I'm literally saying like even to just check the mailbox or to go get some fresh air, like she did not see the light of day for I think about a year. We had to have curtains all over our house. Um, we were in and out of hospitals. Doctors were telling her that there's nothing wrong with her, that she's lying. And we're like, she can't do anything. Like how are you gonna sit up here and tell her that there's nothing wrong with her when clearly there is, you know? And so, um, through all that, we just continued to trust in God and our faith really grew then because when all else fails, we know that God is going to come through. So no matter what the doctors were saying, we were like, God is the ultimate doctor, right? And, um, we were just continuously trusting in him and thank God she is okay now. Um, and she's healed. If y'all were to see her today, you guys would never know what she went through, um, for about a year because she couldn't go outside for about a year and so god is good y'all god is good and so um fast forwarding fast forwarding to high school and stuff when it was time to look for colleges um i had no idea where i wanted to go and i kept hearing about vanguard because they would always send me stuff in the mail or um, they would call me all the time and ask me how my college process decision making was going. And they were just so persistent. And I was like, mom, we're gonna have to visit this college because no other college is this persistent to get me to their school. And um, so my mom and I, we visited Vanguard and y'all know what happened. I'm obviously at Vanguard now and I know God place me there for a reason because Vanguard has been such a blessing to me. My life truly um, changed at Vanguard. I met people, my best friends there. I met um, a great group of people who encouraged me, um, not only as a person, but a person in Christ, which I've never really had that before. Friends that I can have fun with and then also go to chapel with and praise God with and then also do devotionals with you know like it's just it's it's been such a blessing to me and not only that um it taught me a lot and it opened a lot of opportunities for me when I first went to Vanguard I started off as a dishwasher um my freshman year I believe uh actually no my sophomore year um and I worked in the cab I was doing dishwashing I was also serving in the calf and I remember um, that job taught me so much about hard work and discipline because I would literally have to wake up at like 5 30 in the morning um, go to my dishwashing job then go to classes all day then go to my second job and it taught me to work hard you know I knew I needed money to afford tuition and so it taught me a lot and I remember I was asking God, you know, for another job that will give me more experience for my future. And so I was kind of like in between praying on whether what direction God wanted me to go in with that. And so in the midst of that, I was just saying in, you know, the, the job that I already had. And I remember this man came up to me um, when I was working as a dishwasher and I had never seen him in my life. Still to this day, I have never seen him again. And he came up to me and he was like, what are you doing here? And I was like, what do you mean? What am I doing here? Like I'm working. And he's like, you don't belong here. And I was just like, what? Um, and during that time I had been praying on to God, like, should I stay here? Should I start looking for another job? Like, what do I do? 
And that man came up to me and he said that. And literally after that, y'all, I have never seen that man again. And I have literally asked workers like, yo, have you seen this guy before? I'm like trying to describe him. And they're like, girl, no, like you're tripping. And so um, that was an answer for from God. And, you know, I just started applying to random jobs. And I'm like, all right, God, like, you know, whatever is for me, make it work. And I ended up getting offered a position in admissions and I started working as a tour guide. They, they asked me to be a tour guide and I was looking like, God, what are you doing? Because if y'all know me, um, y'all know, well, if y'all know me, knew me before, um, I was very shy and I hated speaking in front of people. Like y'all would never catch me speaking in front of people unless it was like for church or something with my church family. But, um, I was always very shy, timid, like just the girl that liked to stay in the background. Um, and so when God told me to take this position, I was like, God, are you sure? Like, you know, when God tells you to do something and you're like, wait. I wasn't ready for all this like I don't want to do it that's literally how it felt and so anyway I was just obedient and I did it and I ended up finding out that I was really good at public speaking and I did not know that I mean I hated it because it made me it made me so nervous but that's where I found that I was really good at public speaking and if God would not had if God didn't put me into that position I would have never known and so God at Vanguard really worked in getting me out of my comfort zone and learning my strengths and one was public speaking and so um, after that you know then I got the opportunity to be at Live to Free and um, I ended up taking a class on commercial sexual exploitation of children and um, I gained a passion for advocating for victims of sex trafficking and um, I also got the position of Lyft, at Lift to Free and so that's what I do now. My job is literally to speak to youth about um, human trafficking, the risk factors and things like that and I find so much joy in doing that and raising awareness of the injustice that's happening to God's people and also protecting you know vulnerable youth and things like that so it's just it's so funny how God works and, and in the midst of that you know in the midst of switching jobs and things I'm like God what are you doing I don't like this um, but God has a purpose for everything and um, now fast forward to now um, as I said with the previous losses that I had went through, I never dealt with them. I just kind of suppressed them and never really talked about it to anybody, um, you know, and I realized that that was affecting um, my personal life, like with my friends or just relationships with, with my friends and family and things like that because I noticed that I would always have this guard up and this barrier and I, I hated letting people um kind of get to know me on a more intimate level and just letting people in like I've always felt like I can't trust people like I was very friendly but I would only allow people in to a certain extent and then I'm like all right y'all getting a little too close now you know and so um I I found that to be very problematic and I hated being vulnerable with people um, and so when this first quarantine, well, when quarantine first happened, um, I was so used, previously I was so used to distracting myself from the pain because obviously I, I still hurt, um, from the losses that I went through. I was still in pain on the inside, but I would distract myself with either schoolwork or work. Like I was just always very, very busy. And so when quarantine happened, God was like, oh no, you about to deal with this head on, right? Cause there was no more distractions. It's like your home, you have to face what you're avoiding, what you're running away from. And so uh, it was really a grieving process for me. It was grieving that I had not done in a very, well, not even in a very long time, like at all. And, um, you know, I decided to go to counseling because it's free at Vanguard, okay, and y'all know how expensive counseling can get. And I just thought it would be good to talk to somebody who has no preconceived knowledge of me because I was always really good at hiding my emotions and being strong for other people, being there for other people. I, I love helping people 
And um, so I'm always there for other people, but I never allow people to be there for me. And so um, I was always scared to be vulnerable with the people close to me because I didn't know um, how to do that, really. And so being able to talk to somebody who had no idea of what who I was or, you know, any preconceived knowledge was, was really helpful. And um, so I've been going to therapy for about a couple of months now. And when I tell y'all that it has been such a blessing to me, um, I really fought with God on whether or not I wanted to go because I was like, I don't need no therapy. Like I'm fine, you know? And he was like, he was just telling me like, there's nothing wrong with going to therapy. Like it's okay to talk to somebody um, about your issues. There's nothing wrong with that. I feel like there's sometimes this negative stigma that you have to go through something very traumatic to go to therapy, but I feel like therapy is for anybody. If you need, you know, even if, if you don't think that you have gone through anything, um, everybody has a story and it's always good to just talk it out with somebody. And so I did, and she was able to help connect the dots on what I was struggling with um and and has been able to help me and so it's been such a blessing and so i encourage you guys to you know reach out go to counseling if if you have the opportunity to even if you think that you're perfectly fine i thought i was perfectly fine like i was like i do not need therapy okay uh but as soon as she, <laughs> it's so funny because the first time that she called me we were doing intake over the phone and um she asked me how I was doing and I like that's the first thing she asked me and I literally broke down in tears y'all and I was like why am I crying like this and I realized that that's the first time that somebody had asked me how I was doing and not expected me to say I'm doing good you know because people all the time you know we we ask people oh how are you how are you doing and you know they just expect you to be like oh I'm good and then just move on to the conversation but when she asked me genuinely like how are you doing? Um, and I was, it was okay for me to be vulnerable and tell her I'm not doing okay. I need help. Um, it, it broke me down and you know, I was like, dang it. I really, I really am going through stuff. I really need help, you know? And, um, so she was able to really help connect, um, the dots as to what I need healing in and that's, um, healing from loss. And so, you know, I was able to acknowledge that and pray about it and God has been healing me and it's been a process but it's been a beautiful process and I, I'm so grateful for that I'm grateful for Vanguard for um, just putting people in my life and it, it's just been such a blessing to me and that's where I'm at now y'all um, I am just trying to um, trying to go through this healing process and I encourage you guys to reach out to people and check in on your loved ones. Um, I feel like in the past year, we've all been through a lot of loss. And when you think of loss, it doesn't necessarily have to be to death. It could be a loss of a friendship that you might have had and you guys kind of fell off or just the loss of our daily lives, right? Like now we have to be six feet apart all the time. Like I told you, I have not been at church for over a year and this was something that was very like it was ritual to me to come to church every week and now I haven't been able to see my church family that's a loss within itself and so we live in such a fast-paced society where it's like okay we're going through stuff you got to keep up and you know it's just a will that keeps on turning and it's okay to take a step back and be like hey I, I need to really embrace what what I'm going through and take a, a step back and check in on how I'm doing and rather you need to talk to somebody about it rather you need to pray get in your word to strengthen you God is so good y'all and and through my whole life he's always comforted me and he's always put people in my life to comfort me and give me the strength and and the healing that I need and I could not tell my story without talking about God because he's been so so good to me y'all throughout the years even when I was not faithful to him and I was just wilding out trying to do my own thing um he was always faithful to me and God is so good so if you're going through a hard time and you're like I don't know what to do trust in God 
trust in God. My favorite scripture is Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, and it says, trust in God um, with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. When there is, is no trace of God and, and you're kind of just like, I don't know what's happening. Everything is out of my control. Um, trust in him and don't lean on your own understanding because we have to remember that our minds are are finite and God's mind is infinite. So we don't know what God is planning behind the scenes. And if we're so busy on trying to see how God is thinking or how God is going to move, we're we're going to drive ourselves crazy because God is too big for us to try and try and figure him out or figure out what he's going to do in our life. But if you trust in him through it all, y'all, through it all, and I know sometimes it's so hard to do when everything just seems like it's falling apart. When I was going through that loss and I was going through things with my mom, you know, with her injury and things like that, I was like, God, I'm trusting in you because all else is failing. You know, you could put your trust in men, your trust in doctors, your trust in people, but they are going to fail you continuously. But one person who will not fail you is God. And so I encourage you guys to trust in him, to lean on him now more than ever, especially with everything that's going on today. We need God. And so, um, yeah, that's my story, y'all. I hope it was able to bless you guys in some way. Um, and if you're like, girl, I'm just trying to get my little chapel credit, then all right, I'm done. I get it. I've been talking for a little while, but I'm glad you made it this far in the video. And I look forward to connecting with you guys, hopefully next semester when we're back on campus. Um, and if you guys ever need somebody to talk to, um, or you're going through a loss, or you just need a friend to lean on, please do not hesitate to reach out to me and I love to just do life with you. Um, you know, we need each other, especially the body of Christ. We need people that we can depend on and strengthen us and encourage us to um, continue to trust in God and have faith in him. So um, I hope you guys have a blessed rest of the week. That is my story. And